Well, welcome to the Empowering Word. I'm Pastor Ken Brown. Uh, I'm thankful that you join me today. We're going to be continuing in Matthew chapter 5. Uh, we just finished our series on the Beatitudes, uh, that first introduction of Jesus about the dynamics of the kingdom. And, uh, and I felt it really appropriate to continue uh, this next section of the Sermon on the Mount uh, in, in verse 13 of chapter 5, talking about salt and light. And I want to teach this specifically coming out of the teachings of the, the, uh, the Beatitudes because I think that it holds a greater context to what Jesus says next and how it is that we are to live our lives as disciples of Jesus. So without too much uh, else, let's, let's jump into today's scripture. Matthew chapter 5 in verse 13. For you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Salt and light. You know, we just came out of this, this teaching that Jesus gives about the Beatitudes. He, he, lifts out, he lifts out the dynamics of life in the kingdom. That the kingdom of God is at hand and it's in, in his disciples. It is being released that... That, that those who are pure in heart, that those who are humble before him, that those who are merciful are enacting the very kingdom of God. And now he declares to his disciples, those that are closest to him, as he continues his sermon on the mount, he is declaring to them that you are the salt of the earth. You know, salt, when I did a little bit of study, you know, salt, they, they say has over like something like 4,000 different uses. You know, but, but for, for, for sake of time, I'm not going to go into all of them, but, but I think we can instantly think about some of the main uses, right? It's a, it's a, it's a flavoring. Uh, it, is, it, is a, uh, it is a preservative. You know, before refrigeration, uh, uh, meats and, and, and different uh, uh, perishable items were packed in salt and it preserved those items. Uh, it, you know, it's a, it is a cleansing agent. Salt added in the right kind of deal can be a, a cleanser. It's also a caustic agent. It has a, you know, if you combine it in terms of a, 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 a you know, it, it can be used almost in, in an explosive dynamic. So, so you have this kind of stuff that's happening with salt and he's declaring over his disciples, you are the salt of the world. You know, friends, I don't know about you, but if I had to eat food without salt, uh, it, it would be pretty bland. And quite frankly, quite frankly, you know, uh, without the salt as a mineral that we eat, we actually die. And so here the dynamic is, is that, and I want you to see this in, con in the context of the kingdom of God, in the context of what it is that Jesus is declaring over his disciples. He says, that you're the salt of the earth. You need to be salty, though. You need to be that agent. You know, listen, when you throw salt in someone's wound, it's not pleasant. Nobody wants salt in their wound. Nobody wants salt around when they're wounded. Nobody wants salt around when it's thrown into your eyes. Friends, the salt is coarse. It's, it can be... It can be abrasive. It can be all of those things. And yet, and yet Jesus calls us to be in the world as salt, with our saltiness. But friends, if we aren't salty, if we don't actually showcase or show or declare or enact the kingdom, then he basically says we're, we're useless. See, see, I believe that there is a dynamic that that we focus so much 
in the kingdom, we focus so much in our Christian world and in our church world, we focus so much on the, the you know, the, we're almost kind of like we, we hide in our corner. We just, we just, we've come away from the world. We, we, we have separated ourselves and we've separated ourselves almost like, um, like monastic monks living in the hills, uh, you know, far away from the world because we don't want to be affected by the sins of the world. We want to show that, that we, we really are the righteous of God, that we, we don't have sin in our lives. We're, we're separated from the world. But I got to tell you that Jesus doesn't say that to his disciples. He says, go into the world. Be salt in the world. You are not of the world, but you must be in it. So I'm telling you today that the kingdom comes alive when we go in to the world. That the kingdom is meant to advance. That the kingdom of God is meant to advance. That even when Jesus declares in Matthew 16 to his disciples, he says, the keys of the kingdom of God I have given to you. And as you move forward, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. And what he's basically declaring to them, gates are a, are a set uh, parameter. It, it, gates don't move against the church. The church comes and charges against the gates of hell. We are to go out into the world and be salty. We are meant to be salt. Friends, if we lose our saltiness, if we lose our distinction in the world, if we don't go out into the world and show the difference, if we don't show the person of Jesus, if we don't declare the likeness of God in our lives, friends, it'll bring persecution. But that's what Jesus just said. But it also means that we need to go out and do that. Otherwise, otherwise we're, we're, we're no good in the kingdom. We're not deserving of the kingdom of God. It's exactly what he says. We'll be thrown out, trampled underfoot. He also declares, he says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. We are meant to be living light. But friends, there's another place. It's John chapter one, where John declares that Jesus is the light of the world, that the light of the world that the light has come into the world and darkness will never overcome it. See, friends, as disciples, as followers of Jesus, he is the light of the world. He is the light that was spoken in Genesis 1, that dynamic of let there be light, the let there be, the let there be is the same let there be in the dynamic of Jesus the word of God becoming flesh and dwelling among men. And the let there be light is also a spoken dynamic of the spirit that dwells in you, that you are now a reflection of the person of light, that we are light bearers, that we are the ones that have received the light from heaven and are now continuing to shine that light. But he says that you have not been given light to just hide it, to keep it for yourselves, to hide it under a bushel or under a bowl, but rather to put it on the lampstand that it might give light to everyone around you, to be a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. He says, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father who's in heaven. Again, we go back to the dynamic of sonship, that sonship that... Being a child of God, being a son or a daughter of God means reflecting the very character and nature and likeness of God. See, friends, light, just like salt, can be a little bit of an abrasive thing as well. See, see if you shine a flashlight into the, into the eyes of someone that's living in the dark, they will cower because the light is so bright. See, light is, is the, the, the dynamic of light, the, the, the impact of light, the power of light is only as dramatic as the darkness it goes into. For light shines brightest in the darkness. Friends, we are called to be light and life. We are called to be light in the darkness. Go into the darkness. The darkness will not overcome you. 
Because it is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Friends, set your life on fire and everyone will come to watch you burn. Let the Holy Spirit set you ablaze. Set your life with a consuming fire of the, 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 the light of the world that you would be an attractant. See, I'm telling you that the light attracts a lot of strange bugs. The light, if you put a light out in the middle of the night, it'll attract every, every creature far and wide. Let your light shine. Let God worry about what it draws. But you be a light in the world. Let people be drawn into the light. See, see all sorts of all sorts of demonic activity happen in the darkness, but when light enters, see, when we step into an atmosphere and bring the atmosphere of heaven, when we bring the light of heaven, see, when, when, when in the book of Revelation, as John declares what will happen at the end of the age, that we will no longer have a son, but rather it is the very glory of God, the person of Jesus enthroned in in. In, in the new heavens and the new earth that will be the light of the world forever and ever. Friends, we are carriers of that glory. We are light bearers. Let us shine the light as good sons, as good daughters. Let us be that which Jesus has declared, kingdom givers, that we declare the good news of the gospel of the kingdom, that we come preaching and teaching the good news of the gospel. But I declare to you today, friends, let us not just be hearers. Let us not just be teachers. Let us not just be declarers. Let us not just be powerful in our words, but also in our deeds. See, what this world needs is not just people that can talk it, but people that can live it. We need to live this lifestyle of the kingdom, that the kingdom would come alive in us and alive to us, that the kingdom would become, would come on the earth as it is in heaven, that we would have a foretaste of the bread of tomorrow, that the kingdom of God would come in and through us. Friends, as we go about our day, let us be like Jesus. Friends, if you need healing today, I declare healing. Meet the healer. The master physician is at work. Jesus is alive and well. He is not in a tomb. He is not dead. He is alive. He's enthroned in the heavens and the power of God, the kingdom of God is active even today. Friends, be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Be filled with joy and peace in the name of Jesus. Friends, we need to be living examples of the kingdom activated on the earth. Not just in word, but also in deed. That was exactly what Jesus did. He got up from teaching on the Sermon of the Mount and he goes and he heals the sick. He casts out the demons. He heals the leper. He heals Peter's mother-in-law. He raises the dead. He does more than just speak the words of the kingdom for at the end of the day, the kingdom of God is not of words, but of power. The Holy Spirit has not given you a spirit of fear, a spirit of fear that would run in the other direction or hide the light, but rather he has given you the spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. I rebuke the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Walk empowered by the same spirit that, that rose Christ from the dead, that dwells in you. Friends, you are empowered for life and for godliness. You are empowered for much more than just overcoming sin. You are empowered to live out the gospel in front of someone. Friends, it's just like St. Francis of Assisi said. He says, preach the gospel and if you must, use words. Even now, the Holy Spirit is moving on your heart to, to, to step out by faith in the direction that he has been guiding and leading you. Friends, be obedient. Trust in him. Recognize that he loves you and has a massively important destiny upon your life. Well, friends, that's all the time I have. 
I'm so thankful that you joined me again. Live. Live empowered by the word.